Okay. Oh, that works. Cool. Hi. Good to meet you, Nice to meet you, Karen. Okay. Where so we do you have a presentation then? Is it going? No, nobody has presentations. We're just here to chat. So uh, I recommend everyone come up a little bit closer. Feel free to bring your chairs up. Uh, their works up here is also closer. Uh, do you... do you want to be recorded or because I can unplug from the TV? Well, none of you have presentations, right. so we can remove this. Don't worry about that. That is a tomorrow thing. Recorded, but um, we, what do you need? Well, we can stop the recording if that is okay with people. That's that is up to everyone here. If if didn't know if people wanted to be recorded or not. That is perfectly okay. Yeah, or not, but if it's a thing that you would, a resource you would like to have available for other people, we can one from out. We can keep the recording then, since that's the only thing I would want to make sure is that people could. So, I'm going to cancel that. You don't need the TV screen. No, we just need the. So we're going to move this. And here's the excellent thing about this room: brand new. Can someone pull down that cable? Yeah. <laughs> hey. And I forgot about that mic, but we're not using that mic, so we're good. all good. You can. Oh. Yes. Uh, you can. Get that if people don't mind. Feel free to, as long as as you three are talking, we have the camera and you since we have a few people joining us virtually. No, no, I'm fine. I've been all morning. Yes. So, uh, quick welcome to our tech lab. Brand new space. Still testing it out. That's great. Uh, this is where we did the makeup the other night. Like the on. So many hexagons. One more coming too. Yeah, there's three eye chairs. You might look that look cool. Or do you let your no, I don't want to start. It's already spread. I don't just get one more picture for you. Yeah, you want small, sir? Yeah, you want more. Kelly, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. There won't be any more. Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's okay. It is what it is. Um, so I'm Carrie Black. I'm a program officer at the National Science Foundation in the Astronomical Sciences Division. Um, so we manage science grants. And my background is in solar physics. So I have a PhD in plasma physics. I have been doing solar physics um, since, I, since I got my PhD in one form or another. Um, and I can talk a little bit about the agency, but I want to introduce Kim. Um, I'm Kim Eames. I'm the communications lead for the Space Weather Programs, Space Weather Observations Programs Division at NOAA. Um, we're a joint office with NASA that just started. Um, we used to do smaller satellites. This time we're going completely to all space weather satellites. Um, and this is our first year hosting this event. Um, so everything is new 
Um, we have no path to follow. <laughs> um, and it's, we're learning a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, so for folks who don't know, National Science Foundation does lots of science grants. We don't do lots of public outreach and engagement events. We have a tendency to support other organizations like AAAS um, to do outreach. Um, this time around, things are a little different because of the 2017 eclipse. You know, everybody at NSF was uh, very excited about it. So we're trying to do more actual public engagement, but that's still in the works at the moment. Um, so our plans are developing. Um, and one of the reasons that when we work with NOAA, by the way, I should say, yeah. uh, NOAA is a really big partner. We also work on space weather um, um, a lot with NOAA, actually. Uh, so we're, there are our big partners, I think, in the Eclipse, and we'll part, we're partnering with NASA as well. But all of this is evolving, and uh, government bureaucracies move slowly. Yeah. If, you're, <laughs> if you don't already have this type of thing in place, so I think we're both trying to work on um, raising awareness of the Eclipse within our agencies. And I'm very lucky my division director is really, really excited about the Eclipse and wants as much public engagement as NSF can possibly do. So one of the reasons that we're here today is I wanted to hear from you folks um, about what you're interested in, what you think you need from maybe NSF and from NOAA and NASA. If we get Kelly here in a few minutes, um, there's tons of resources. I've been overwhelmed by the number of resources that have been provided today. Uh, so we're still trying to kind of figure out what what NSF can do that would best help everybody in this sort of in this world. So I want to open the floor up to you and say, what what do you want to know? What what can we do for you? <laughs> what do you need? Yes, great. <laughs> awesome. Oh well, someone graciously forwarded the um, letter that was NSF sent out. Oh, the DTL. Yeah, yeah. I don't speak NSF. Yeah. I got a learning curve to go through, but um, but your is nice. That's what we do is we engage, engage non-traditional audiences and, and and make space cool and make science cool. Um, and the eclipse, the the universe graciously planned the eclipse so we could hear his night. So we're all in with post events on the path. Um, and I want to like bring in a whole cadre of um of, like recent graduates. Like hire them straight out of college, um, spend a year of ser in service of their country and in science, and um, embed them in the communities along the path of mentality, oh, so they can be the ones explaining the stuff to the teachers and the librarians and to the wait staff and the hotel staff and the city <laughs> leaders. Yeah, uh, what we're doing and why it's important in the remote areas. Um, um, and so yeah, so trying to figure out navigate the path of like funding and opportunities for students and staff. Um, awesome. This is super exciting. This is super exciting stuff to hear about. So you need you need money to make this happen. Oh, I want to make you pay the salary because I'm you know they're going to give up their job you know going to work at Lockheed or or Blue and and come you know do something really cool like yeah. a you know city year or, or the, um, <laughs> that was like right. magic right. 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 or space core. Yeah. Uh, space core. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah. So, but this is a thing to but like you know, a little small. It's like a grad student stipend for yeah. uh, for them to be in the Um. Okay. So for this dear colleague letter that we just put out was inviting proposals into the um, grants programs at NSF on the eclipse. So typically, what we target is people doing the science of the eclipse and less so engagement. However, the eclipse is a special case. Um, and so we are entertaining public engagement proposals. Um, so the, there are multiple um, programs that you can submit a proposal to. Um, I mean, depending on the type of money you're talking about, we can target a different way. So NSF typically supports science proposals that are on the order of like $100,000 a year. Um, I mean, I'm talking about astronomy grants program. Um, it's typically about $100,000 a year, um, which will maybe pay for more than a half grad students. 
<laughs> so it's not it's not a ton of money. Um, and then there are other areas within NSF that um, that are really targeted towards education. Um, so education research. So folks are doing education um, engage education. Uh, research, but also there's a new division on um, informal, formal, and informal um, oh, education, which is all new to me. I just learned about it a couple of weeks ago, and I don't know a ton, but after next week, I'll know some more. Um, so I think uh, this type of thing seems like it would have good um, connection to to this particular division of education and human resources. So what I might suggest is submitting a proposal to astronomy um our deadline is in a month though it's november 15th so it's really it's cut it really really tight um but um one of the nice things about nsf is that you can submit a proposal to us anytime it doesn't necessarily have to be with one of these calls that has a ID date. So if like November 15th isn't working for you, you can still submit a proposal to astronomy after that. Mm -hmm. And I can help guide through if you're interested. So this seems like a really nice way for education human resources to collaborate with astronomy and something like this. And we've been looking for ways to help support um, this exact type of um, engagement. Because it's not something we can do ourselves. Hey, Kelly, come on. We have a seat I for you. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. but, um, we just did a little introduction to ourselves and our agency. If you want to. Sure, sure. Kelly Corrick, uh, NASA agency lead for the Eclipse. So, solar physicist by training and, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, just, just two eclipses. It's fine. That's all. That's all. <laughs> So my name is Bobby Easterly with me is uh, Rochester Academy of Science and Astronomy section. Oh, that's And we're the parent organization for well before the museum started back in 1888. So as we get involved with this, we have professors and other both students and things. We have sites in the area. Uh, ours is all nonprofit. And so what we do is we engage with, uh, we bring in students from RIT, U of R, people that have had backgrounds in physics and astronomy and engage with them and actually help with grants and other stuff for them. Uh, for their education. So yeah, I'm interested to see what, what you've got. Um, that's on the one path you're talking about for submitting a proposal, you know, for, right? I thought when I looked at this and we, we divided it up, the group of us was here and we divided it up. I said, okay, I'll go to the government one. You guys aren't going to that one. <laughs> so, so the thing I was listening to as I sit there and observe these things as in the different meetings, I hear from Ohio and that's, my goodness, agency, fantastic. Let's give a hand of applause. What I'm trying to hear is from New York. I mean, here from New York, we're <laughs> right behind you. There we go. We are forming an Okay. If you could make April 8th a state holiday, we would love you for us. God, wouldn't I love that? <laughs> no, it just, we're anything and everything is under consideration. So I just want to reassure you that we are in part. Right. I mean, and, and we caught, you mentioned about holiday, you realize what this is, is right after the spring break, all these students coming back in, if nothing happens, they get on the bus, and while the bus is, I can see the accidents and everything else, if they don't actually do something. Yeah, so, so we are focused on both public safety and food transportation, and also like the market is towards the next, so it's okay. the state education department is also on the track. So I'll be listening. There's Rick in the back. Thank you. Uh, Ricky, New Hampshire Solar Eclipse Task Force. Just wanted to share with you your, I think I spoke to you a little bit about it. Uh, we passed the first in the nation Solar Eclipse Day bill that uh, New Hampshire Governor submitted, signed into law in August 2021. So we, it took a couple of years with COVID and everything else. And we got it through. And the thing we did is we didn't ask for, we, we asked for Solar Eclipse Day. We didn't ask for, a holiday or people to be off of work or kids to be out of school. We just want to recognize as the state government, which was a much easier lift than any of the others. Now we can go back and we tweak it or tweak it with the individual community. And I realize it's probably much too late, especially in our political environment nationally, to get another bill through. But anyone is free to check it out. The New Hampshire Senate bill 
105. Um, we can tweak the language. Uh, we have first of the nation because we were first. Um, and our political climate first primary, first to vote. So we tied in. <laughs> that. But every other state is welcome to, to tweak it, take out that language. The main body of the language uh, addresses the sun, moon, and you and how we're all in this together. And so I think the main body language, although you can change that if you want to, however it works, but feel free. I have a copy of it together. Well, and, uh, Bravo. So shout out to, to New Hampshire. I got my PhD at UNH. <laughs> <laughs> I have another request. Too, you know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I guess this is an okay time. I'm the chief pilot of the Eclipse Mobile. It's parked out in the parking lot, mm -hmm. and I have self-funded it this summer. I've gone, I've gone here, I've gone across Maine, northern New Hampshire. I'm trying to go across Vermont. Um, they're not returning emails from the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. They're not returning money. So anyone in Vermont. So let's talk. I grew up in Vermont. Okay. So, yeah. So let's see what we can do. Yeah. My request is next summer. I start the Vitality Path Tour uh, about a week before Memorial Day. I'll launch from Buffalo. The month of June, I'll spend touring the Vitality Path from Buffalo down to St. Louis. The month of July, I'll be along the Vitality Path from St. Louis to San Antonio, turn around the end of July, beginning of August, come back to uh, New Hampshire in the month of August. Hey, you want to flip that? You do not want to be in San Antonio in July. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I, <laughs> so oh, it's got good air conditioning. Yes, people will want to come out and see you because it's fall. <laughs> well, Rick Varner already set me up. For okay, good night at the Scobie mm -hmm. Institute. I'm going to be with Mitch in Evansville for an event. The thing is, I'll be going along following that three month schedule. So anyone who's interested in the Eclipse Mobile, as I said, people can check it out. It's here. I'll be in Cleveland in April of 23 and go back and back and forth from here if anyone in New York wants to take advantage of it. And then I'll be launching. But my request is I was able to self fund this summer and a trip here, but 100, 110 days on the road, I can't do on my own because I own two dollars stores, not 200. Uh, Any suggestions? I'm uh, talking to 500 science teachers in New Hampshire at the fall conference okay. next week. So I'm going to try to link with them and then maybe talk to Dennis about linking with other science teacher associations along the path of totality. Obviously, I can go to Dodge because it's a challenger. Domino, because I've worked with for 40 years, I can talk to them. Come. But I'd like to get, in addition to corporate sponsors, others, because if corporate is funding this tour, they're going to want me to go to their corporation. Yeah. I want to go to the small town. I want to go along the center line. I want to go to big cities as well. I want to go to libraries. I want to go to everyone and not just where there's a Domino's or a Dodge dealership <laughs> or Eclipse Gum or any of these corporations. So any thoughts or help? The Dear Colleague letter that Loretta brought up um, has language in it for um, supplement requests to existing grants um, for public engagement. So what I'm thinking is that we may be able to connect you to somebody that already has a grant at NSF that could request funding to help support your engagement. Yeah. Um, but we need to do some work on this. So okay. I'll, I'll give you my card, please. Okay. Let's let's talk. Sorry. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, I mean, think thinking about who what big universities there are on the path, there's got to there's got to be more than me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but UT Austin, uh, University of Indiana. You know, I mean, there's some places that have got, they've got to have quite a bit of funding. And, so, and yeah. it's not yeah. a high, high amount because I need fuel. I don't want to eat Domino's pizza every day. Right. <laughs> right. But I'm, I'm willing to, you know, open up. I'll stay with folks along the path. I don't think I will sell them every night. Sometimes I will if I'm rural or something like that. And I'm, I'm willing to really partner with anyone along the totality path. I, I want to stay within the totality path, however, yes, yes. because it, it's it's an eclipse mobile. It has a total solar eclipse wrapped on it. And if I 
it's not going to be a good representation outside of the tablet totality. So I really want to stay within that totality. I was going to suggest that you also look at so the American Institute of Physics is the umbrella organization for a whole bunch of um, societies, including the American Astronomical Society and the American Physical Society. But it's also so the American Association of Physics Teachers, that one, I think. And then Dennis, who we saw um, yeah. earlier today, he is the past president of NSPA, which is the uh, National Science Teachers Association. Yeah. So those are other institutions that, especially if you're targeting schools and teachers, those would, those would be great. AIP, I think, you know, is really interested in, you know, how it can engage people across different, you know, like, across different things. So, for instance, uh, we, the, the task force has money to do some workshops that we got because it's a mixture of uh, Society of Physics students and AAS and um, AAPT. Um, but there are others, and and the Oxford Society is also one of them. Yeah, so, Victoria Catholic. Yeah, she, uh, she's SPS. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, that's fantastic. Thank you. My specialty is building networks. That's right. what I'm good at. I'm not good at astronomy or pizza. That well, pizza. <laughs> I'm good at networks. Where are you going to be for? Total. I will be in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire. The reason I will be in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, which is very far north, is because Holbrook, Pittsburgh, and Lancaster. A couple reasons I'm going to be there. As a chaser, the last one to come to me was in 1959 in New Hampshire. I was three months old. Oh, <laughs> the next one to come to New Hampshire is May 1st, 2079. The odds of me seeing that one at 119 or four. <laughs> Only this one, I don't have to chase it. The second reason is because not too many people to heck with coming to New Hampshire. Very few people are staying in New Hampshire. All the professionals, Rick Feinberg, Barbarian, Kelly Beatty, they're all getting the heck out of not only New Hampshire, they're getting out of New England. Yeah. Which sort of leaves me as a resident expert. So I'm sort of excited because there aren't going to be very many other experiences where I'll have the most knowledge about it. So that's my second reason. The third reason is we're doing the solar eclipse time capsule. It goes into the ground on May 1st, 2024, uh, at the McCall Shepherd Discovery Center, and it's going to have everything from the eclipse goes out of the ground 55 years later on May 1st, 2079. I won't be there, but there will be a bottle of Monkey Eclipse Rum. Ten year olds to be put into the ground. I couldn't partake, but now that they're will be 65 in my age, hopefully they still be well enough to have a shot at my food. Run a beer and it'll be down to buy the 55 years old. Monkey Eclipse Rum. <laughs> yeah, that's an amazing idea is the time capsule um because again it's going to take so long to have the next eclipse in most of the areas and to think about the because that's actually something that nasa really is focusing on is what is the sustainability of this is not just oh hey you're really excited about science for one day but like how do you make it longer and that's a really long reach um and again it might not be exactly science you know it's also some like things about just life life <laughs> that's, uh, it addresses the general public, like everyone has a list of books that has all the science, which is great, but I want that list to include Gerald Gain and the Morris Clare book, because Stephen King will reach a whole new group of people mm -hmm. that we haven't reached, plus he lives in Bangladesh, which is just south of Tallahassee in Maine. But anyone who knows Mr. King, Please let them know this is a great time to re release those two books and really sponsor an African contest for everybody. Whatever, nobody has ever accused me of. Oh, he is two of his books are about it. Yeah, the Lars Claire Warren and Gerald King, prominently featured. And unlike Mark Twain, he's still around. Um, so all these things that I want to do, I tried to do them in 2017, but I started in 2015, it was way, way too late. So I started August 22nd, 2017, the plan for this one in my own backyard. And honestly, having an eclipse mobile, getting the governor to sign a bill, 
everything. And the final conference after the annular solar eclipse is in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. So not only did the eclipse come to us, but hopefully many folks here come to New Hampshire on October 27th. That's a good question. Lisa, you looked like you had a question. Did you have a question or comment? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, you know, um, for many of us, we're um, along the Great Lakes. So our weather in April is questionable at best. Um, you know, we could have high winds, we could have three feet of snow, it could be 70 and sunny, all in one day. It's You know, and, and one of our um, operational issues is always weather, you know, and being able to forecast that as far out as we possibly can so that, you know, we can pre-position, um, you know, equipment and personnel you know, the way that we would need it. And obviously um, having that, you know, um, variable as far as like how many people will actually be, you know, in the area at that same time, I mean, we, we could be looking at, you know, potentially, you know, not just looking, you know, the totality, it could also be, um, you know, trying to help people out of, you know, a snowbank. So my question is how, um, are there any um, things in the hopper right now about um, you know trying to uh, gain more um, visibility on you know weather forecasting or you know models? <laughs> you know? I have related you know, like space weather too. Because last oh, night Lord. there was also a, there was a bunch of sunspots like randomly out of nowhere during a quiet period for the Casper one. Oh. I called it yeah, and uh, and yeah, and I don't know, it might be in the northern parts, maybe right. or maybe maybe if you get lucky. So yeah, so my dream, I put in the order that I want a coronal mass ejection to go off while we're while we have totality, and then yeah, we get aurora four days later because then right. we got people booked for four days. Yeah. Um, and it's still max, so the sun is going to be much yeah. more active, and so there's much more likelihood that something is going to happen that there's at least the sunspots there, um, and again, much more likely that there might be a coronal mass ejection aurora later um, than was in 2017. So so this brings up an interesting discussion because as you're talking about what's it going to be. Because what I've been following is, um, again, again, following the science, there was a discussion about the the European has been done as well, but in the United States, how they allocated 5G networks mm -hmm. is the basic effect is not all the garbage that they're talking about. The effect is the prediction of satellites. They're going to take us back. What I've read is a prediction of the transmission of how, the accuracy, because we watched the accuracy go from 85, 90, you know, high up. We're really predicting exactly what's going to happen. And the transmission, if we don't get this regulated correctly within the government and so on, it's gonna, it screws it up. And they're talking about taking it back to like 1987 and have not be able to predict things a week or two away. So that's that's an interesting piece. It's a twist on this, but I wasn't thinking about that until you talked about investigating this. And that's from um, you know science studies of, of what's happening. It's affecting the satellite transmissions that they, they, they use those frequencies to look at the particle and molecule size and it can predict what's actually in the atmosphere and give an accurate prediction. Right? Am I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm I never I never knew that until I started digging into this. Because mm -hmm. so, I don't want to hear the garbage about people saying, oh my goodness, it's you know, very I'm very pro science, you know. So <laughs> hey. <laughs> I know you're not involved in every model. Yeah, <laughs> I I don't know. Um a great subject to dig into yeah. because this is exactly what they're referring to if it affects our percentage and it keeps dropping our ability to accurately predict in, in the weather mm -hmm. because of the satellite doing measurements of how the frequencies that they're using then then the i so i said is this a course problem right and, and what i discovered is if you dig through european sites they took care of this very well they they clearly put boundaries and guidelines of the transmission what's allowed as Wait, they move so forward, so it doesn't affect it. Yeah, huh? I, I, I don't think the communication satellite are interfering with our weather prediction. Yeah, I, I think what I'm hearing is that the 5G and stuff, stuff with some of the communication oh, with the data is the 5G uh, discussion. Management. Oh, okay. yes. This is the yeah. government yeah. management. Right. And then yeah. in, in Europe, apparently, they're very focused 
and they put specific boundaries in the laws. But in the United States, they haven't done that. They've allowed the corporations to be able to say, oh, we'll flex it. And, it's, and the effect, yeah. the effect is hitting the satellites for prediction. And one of the scientific articles I read, I forget where it was well, recently, um, one of the articles I read maybe two months ago was that this actually affects, and they explained it about the molecular, how it hits the water particles yes, and looks at the yes, structure of yes. what different mm -hmm. what different chemicals are in the air. And it goes, it's reducing our, it's going to take us back to 1985. If they oh, if they the don't do something with it, uh, yeah, okay, okay, as the rollout. So we're talking 2024. This may radically affect what we're talking about. Okay. So, oh, go ahead. No, I. Well, so, spectrum's a big issue. So NSF astronomy is a big yes. part of the. Um, it's a big part of the the spectrum communications. Yep. So so this is really NRAO that that is the large part of that, right? Because we're talking about radio waves. I mean, NRA is affected by it. Yeah. But they also do the outreach to do spectrum management. Do they do? No. I, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm, only, stuff, I'm yeah. only superficially like hear little bits about it from our spectrum office and astronomy. So all I can say is right. that I know that folks are working. So I know Germany and, are and, and um, the Netherlands are, you know, Danish groups who are talking about it had done, had done some of the details and they were giving specifics on it. So it's, you know, something I'm just throwing it out. I'm, I don't remember all the details of the article. Until you're talking about, you know, we really need to be able to predict the weather. And I go, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is actually going to affect it. You all know Susan, Susie Gurney? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. She's head of education at NRAO. She might be a really good yeah. person to ask or to have her with. Um, so, NSF Astronomy um, Spectrum Office um, is a part of the UN effort on spectrum. On the yeah. Yeah, and I think though to go back to the original question, that was really fun science. <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I was like, oh yeah, let's, let's think about this. That's it. That wakes up a different part of the brain. Um, and um, but you know, talking about weather predictions, I think some of the planners had a really great. I mean, yes, you have to do large large bars, right? Like, what's the worst case scenario? Okay, the worst case scenario would be that a lot of people come, you get a great big blizzard, and you know, folks are stuck. So in some ways, you have to plan for that. And then hope that it's 70 degrees and sunny and you have maybe you know a huge influx of people but then they can just go on their merry way right like they, you don't have um have all of that so i think that that's the kind of things to consider and in terms of how fast we can you know improve our weather prediction that just takes a lot of time by scientists and it just it's it's an iterative process and it tends to go in like decade chunks so unfortunately i think that this is a shorter time frame than us improving um, weather predictions. And again, we don't personally do for weather predictions, but that's just science in general. It kind of takes the 10 years to get like those quantum leaps in, in accuracy. That's what I was going to say. I mean, we have, um, we have two, we have our geostationary satellites right now, and we have our LEO satellites right now. And we're actually, there's, there's two main programs. There's GOES, which is where you get all the really cool imagery on the news and on the weather channel with the lightning mapper and all that. And then we have JPSS. And JPSS, I'm not completely sure on what it's specifically measuring, but I know it does feed into our, our weather forecasting. And we're actually launching JPSS 2 next week. So that's the next generation that's been being worked on for. 10 plus years. Um, so I know that'll be in place by then and we'll have already checked out and everything like that. Um, I know we're not looking at launching any speed. Yeah, it's 2025 first. Well, we, on goes you, we're putting a coronagraph on goes you in 24, but I don't know the date for that one. Um, so I think one of the things that I would keep in mind is even if the accuracy is being improved and the ability to project out, it's not going to be that you're going to know a month yeah. ahead of time. And, right. and so from the point of view of planners, you're still only going to have a, a, sh a brief window. Yeah. So you have to be, you have to have the things in place. Or for for that. You just... Hopefully, you'll know a few days ahead whether you really need to. But even that, right, right, right. Yeah. So, I, I would love to throw out a fun solution that they used in, in London at a recent eclipse. They were so concerned about the weather, as they should be, just like here, right. that, that they were prepared and ran on a huge 
video screen, big time square, um, stop motion animation of an eclipse while there was cloud cover blocking the eclipse. Uh, oh, and, the an and the animation was done with Oreos that you saw the top cookie go across. <laughs> the <laughs> the <laughs> well, so, I mean, I think, I think that there's also things like, you know, uh, whether it's NASA or not, um, people choosing to do live streaming along the path. And so if you have both um, along the path and uh, kind of a, uh, you know, you may even be able to beam in that's something really close, like a real image. That, that's that's our plan. Right. And, and that's I think what we're that planning for. Is that's gonna, really cool. We're going to, what we're planning for is to have three locations across the U.S. So obviously one would be where we're headquartered in Silver Spring, Maryland, then partnering with them, Boulder, Colorado. And then we're going to pick one location on the path of totality for each for each event. And the hope is that we'll be able to get our reporting people out there and do a live stream that could be fed to the other two. Thanks, and we should check. And yeah, I'm on the boat for both eclipses. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have to figure out the tag one. <laughs> just, just want to add one thing because New Hampshire is just as bad as. The lake area, if not worse, for weather and things. But on top of that, we have very few major roads up there. Yeah. So pretty much when we get people in where it's going to be total, they're there. Right. So we've come up with a couple of plans. One is IT, something that's involved in cloud cover, blizzard, whatever. But the second thing is also the inclusive part. We're setting up with the visually impaired community in New Hampshire that will no matter what the weather is, they don't experience eclipses visually. Right. They experience the vibration, sound, music, clicks. And if it's sunny, great. If it's not, it can actually turn over to them and it can use it as a teaching moment. For right. The citizens that, hey, you can still experience it. And by the way, these people leaving us, this is what life is. Yeah. So, and if it's not, if it's sunny in New Hampshire, and Claudia and Rochester, we can link in. So there are people here that were doing the, that they light were doing the make, so, yeah, the light sound box. Yeah. Uh, and there's another group, um, Trey Winters group, or if Um Yeah, so there's there's several that are doing these things. Yeah, yeah. A friend of mine worked for National Federation for Flying. He's actually flying. He's working on it. And then we have Insight Foundation to Concert New Hampshire, which is a school for the NASA also has a beautiful Braille book that you can get through uh, Goddard, and I've got a link to that, yeah, that, that they can, a like a tactile lines. map. And I don't know if you can hear us online, but don't forget about the Earth science observations like clouds and air temperature with GLOBE. You can do that if it's cloudy and watch the live stream of somewhere where it's not cloudy. Definitely. Does everybody hear that? Yeah. 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 I was going to ask about like any citizen science stuff, like Globe or yeah. Yeah. That's you. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> so yeah, so Globe definitely is is one of those things where you know even if uh, we can do measure temperature measurements, you can do other things that are on the ground that are going to happen whether or not you can see it. Um, so those are kind of great. Uh, sorry, sorry, Earth backup plan uh, <laughs> to the to the uh, to, to seeing the, the eclipse. Um, and for citizen science, um, we just had our first kind of round of funding um, uh, funding calls for citizen science projects um, to do things like again support globe support um, other. Um, there's also a lot of ham radio um, ionospheric tests because yeah, the sense. atmosphere is going to um, suddenly go from day to night. So it's a very abrupt change. Um, so that's really tells us a lot of science and then we'll change back to having sunlight. Um, so those things are important uh, for radio communications as well as some atmospheric modeling for this planet and other planets. Um, so those types of citizen science, it'll be kind of, kind of an easy measurement yet at the same time, give us a lot of different science um, that can be can be done. So definitely some citizen science projects coming up. Um, and there is a citizen science, I'm blanking on the NASA, but if you Google NASA citizen science, there's a citizen science page. There's a question for you here. It says in 2017, several 
solar eclipse glasses claimed they were endorsed by NASA. I searched NASA website for the endorsement, could, but could not find it. Could you point this out? Yes. So um, NASA does not sell glasses, first of all. Anything with a NASA book on it cannot be sold. Um, so if you go to Amazon, and I did this just a few weeks ago, and search eclipse glasses, and you see something with NASA on it, they are not NASA glasses because we, as a federal government, do not do that. Um, because your taxpayer dollars are making our solar eclipse glasses. Um, the uh, safety messages that we have are that of the AAS. We're working hand in hand with them um, and the NSF and, and NOAA on safety glasses. Um, so we have um, two approved uh, US um, suppliers of them because we know we, uh, we've had their ISO certification verified. Um, and so there are only two, two providers that we use. Um, and so you can only get them for free. At events. Who are the providers? Well, one of them is here. Yeah, yeah one of them. Wait, 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 and, and Rick Kleinberg did a, an amazing job in 2017 and has been continuing to maintain a list of uh, suppliers that have ISO uh, approval. Right. So yeah. it is possible. But both Rainbow Symphony and uh, American Paper Optics are fantastic and will work with you and help you with yeah. making branded stuff and all of that. Right. Yeah. And yes. Yeah. Well, actually, I will tell you that Rainbow, because that was a question I asked. And the daughter that is here, Sophie, so, Sophie, yep. she, she that's her specialty is decals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, we're getting Very nice. we have an eclipse mobile we'll path, but we're getting eclipse we'll 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 nice. Okay. Okay. One of my other goals is to get millions of people to travel to the path of decals. Um, it's a two pronged problem one is like reaching the general public, um, so and the only things that seem to like penetrate the like all the chaos the, the bombardment of information get uh you know so it makes the news is like Krispy Kreme you know releasing the eclipse mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I know <laughs> <laughs> thanks for finding for sunspot must bring me yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so like um and you know we all are you know brought brown is activists but like and I know it's NASA can't call it call it Krispy Kreme but like what kinds of things can we do at the national but, but you have that national reach that like if NASA's calling, you know, United Airlines, you know, we need more flights to Dallas or to, to Cleveland, you know, like, is there things we could do other, you guys are obviously automatically work at the national level to like help with <clears throat> awareness. So my suggestion would be just look at how excited everybody is about every release of JWST. Yeah. yeah. You've all seen images yeah. from, from yeah. I'm not naming the talk but JWST. Yes. And I think if there's a way to tack on to that, that would be it. I mean, NASA does an amazing, I mean, NASA is the the name, but I don't know how, how you go beyond, you know. So, you know, as the federal government, we, we can't have partnerships, How yet at the same time, part of it is um, coming to us with great ideas that we can then fund and have you do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Because, because that's the other thing about the agencies is, you know, I mean, I come from a science background. I also do happen to have a major events background, but that's a whole other story. Um, that's a whole other story. Um, and uh, and so, you know, it's it's great. We want to we want to do we want to do things and sponsor things, but you know, we also can't quite do everything. Um, and we are trying to um, bring awareness to other federal agencies yeah. um, to tell other federal agencies that these are things you should look out for too, if you could participate or at least make folks aware of. Um, and then have it in folks' best interest that they um, that they participate, right? I mean, yeah, if suddenly everybody wants to go to Dallas, you know, Americans start seeing upticks in their in their intake and like, huh, maybe we should reroute some planes to Dallas or we should, you know, figure out this eclipse is coming. Um, we talk to, you know, meteorologists and broadcast folks, and, you know, maybe they talk about weather. And, you know, there are ways that we can reach, but it's much more about information. Um, and then if you have something very specific, like a specific ask, then it is to talk to one of us to say, oh, yeah, there is something like um, the flights. Do you know anyone in the industry? Um, you know, especially with NASA and the plane connection, 
do you know anyone in that industry that might that you can fund or that we can partner or something like that uh, and bring bring a specific idea because I just can't go to the airline industry and be like you all should do this yeah um, that's not that's would be government interference so that's yeah. not a thing to do. Yeah. So, um, what what I do I'm an artist and I represent a large group of artists teaching artists that go into school with all sorts of programs using their art to teach all sorts of things that are in the curriculum and the whole reason i'm here was that we've been independently working on our own sort of programming and to clarify when i say teaching artists what that is not necessarily going in and teaching our art it is actually using our art working with classroom teachers to to use the art to enhance curriculum that's there we started working on jingles that we want to put out there, like where your uh, your your eclipse glasses if you're going to be outside and um, things like that and programs like that. So I'm actually interested in in talking about the whole funding thing and getting the message out. Um, so I kind of wanted to I wanted to mention that's what we do. That's our our goal is to educate, and I'm looking for people that I can work with that that have the better science backgrounds i mean a lot of us do have science backgrounds i already do science programs but the between the funding and the the educators i have 30 artists on my roster that, that are actively looking to create more material and do this kind of stuff and one of the things we've talked about doing if we could get funded would be the next next school year so the 23 24 school year starting in september Every month we work on, we focus on one thing for K through 12 kids and every month shift, you know, this, this month we're doing this and try to get that messaging out there. That's why when you started talking about the education and the messaging, uh, I'm, I'm interested in that. So I just wanted to, you know, I've kind of heard that sort of theme a few times that you want to educate. Yeah. Um, so I'd love to continue that conversation with anybody that, that, that is interested in similar. It's easy for us to help you make connections to scientists too if you need them. That's for sure. Yeah, nice the, the, the funding is really the the connection to the scientists and principal can lead you to the funding. That's, yeah, so uh, you're, you're nice to talk because okay. I I can see ways to then be putting in a supplement and excellent, yeah. excellent. Um, Kelly, there's another question for you online, which is how can I apply to be a NASA supplier? Oh, a NASA supplier. Um, so there should be an open when we do um, uh, when we do any requisitions or purchases, um, and so it is. Uh, so yeah, so so there there will be a call soon for more classes. So given that, that comes yeah, up through the federal federal contract. federal contracts, yeah, 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 yeah. So the federal system will will send something out, um, and then you apply. Um, if you have the ISO certification, that's what we would then need to double check. Um, about the ISO certification. So um, looking out for that and maybe getting in contact with myself and Rick just to make sure that the certification um, mm -hmm. is there because that will hold up things if it's if it's on there. I can't quite read from here, but um this <clears throat> one. It's for you. Okay. I, and then I looked. So okay. sorry to turn you off. Okay, no, no problem. Um, I heard a term today that I think we all should let the double have it. I think that is yeah, key because I think that it's great we have an eclipse. We had one in 2017. We're going to have one in 2025. But this time we have a dress reverse. Yeah, yeah I think we're going to call it a dress reverse. That's what I don't want to confuse your expectations. It's a totally different experience. But it is, but the general public, the way we look, I look at it, that's the preview. We have the main event. And we're lucky that the annual year comes first and not second. And yeah. I just think that we really need to just drum that home because the other thing is all of us planning events for the TSC can use the ASC as a dress rehearsal, make sure we got enough glasses, make sure we got enough emergency management. In New England, we've got all the lead keepers. Not so we've got yeah. to be there. It's true. We just got to give glasses, they can look at it. 
Oh, that was pretty cool. Well, if you really want to see a show, come back in 175 days. And yeah, you can take your reservation. Right? Yeah, my, my only reticence of this is just simply there is such a different safety message because you never take off your flight right. for 2023. Um, and then you, we want folks to see the corona. So you want to take off your glasses at the right spot in 2024. Um, and so that's why I'm trying to treat them as, as a little bit separately in my in my lingo, just so that again, that safety message stays super clear. Like our website right now has the safety messages for 23. And then the day after it will switch to the safety messages for 24, just so that there is no confusion that like I'm taking off my glasses to see a partial eclipse or, or, or you know, an annual or a partial eclipse. Um, I'm keeping my glasses on. Um, and that's important also for folks who are gonna be off the path. Um, is that, you know, the entire continental U.S. will see a partial eclipse that day, yeah, whether or not you're on, right, the and then well, you need to wear all your glasses, and then the only special people who don't get the glasses are, like, this thin, thin man at the um, So, you know, that's another safety message for the masses. Um, I actually, a few weeks ago, and I didn't go get the shot. I got the chatting with the staff, and they actually were still very confused about that, where they actually thought that, Totality was when you needed to put your glasses on. Uh, also, they weren't sure about lunar eclipses. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those, those it's still all jumping. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> eclipse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it was Janet, maybe who said about having a nice graphic that can do this. And there are ways to do that. Um, I think we, you know, because you have a partial anyway when you have COVID. So it's just getting, but, but you do have to just keep hammering. It's about in 2017. I was with a Harvard chemistry professor, um, one of the most cited professors in the world, and he's like, "I'm so glad I was at this event with an astronomer at the microphone who said it's safe to take off your glasses now, yeah. because I would not have taken my glasses yeah. off during totality because I've been so trained like right. you can't do that." Um, and I was like, "Oh my god, that's so it's been good." So I'll look at Newton and go, "That's fine." <laughs> Mildred shot people brought that up about timing. Like, well, if it says it's in one place, you can do it for two minutes, but then another spot is going to be a minute and a half. Like, how do we know? I guess we should just keep them on the whole time. So, oh, it stars out, you're safe. That's a great thing. There's another communication about glasses, just like Rainbow Symphony, but that would have been that spec. And it's, and some people are talking about how many do we need for the total eclipse? Well, that's one discussion, but you've got an annular coming up because you'll need glasses there. Those, those people are going to lose some of those by the time they get next year, yeah. right? What's the shelf life of the existing glasses oh, yeah. they have laying around? No. That is, that is what, what no, so they told me. So it used to be that the, you should get rid of them after three years, but the current version of the Mylar is very, very stable. And so basically, if you've got them from 2017, they're fine. The better film mm -hmm. thing, yeah. As long as they're not spread. Well, yeah, the they're basically, good, they, can't hold. You, they have to have been kept so that they're right. not they don't have any scratches or holes or anything but they are completely fine i still i still have some from the 2012 annular and transit of venus because they happened within like two weeks of each other um and that's still fine right so that's what i was getting at is this this is this, some of these people are discussing well i have this event should i order five thousand should i order ten they actually think out of the box you've got an annular coming distribution you've got a total coming is there any other people going to? Are there other events? The answer is yes, of course. And so they need to order, you know, in, in large quantities to be able to cover that to be able to get their pricing too. Yeah, I think that's our plan. Um, we had kind of talked about that before. Right. Is, right. That's our, that's one of our challenges is how many do we order? Right. Like, we've never done this before, so we don't know. And we don't know how involved we're going to be able to be with our local community. You know, who are we going to be able to give them out to? So I think the way we're handling it is order way above what we expect, like the holy cow number. And yeah. then right. whatever we don't use, we have in supply for the next the next event. So Australia will take any deal well. I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure. We had the partial eclipse, what, a couple of years ago? It was a year and a half. I was out at Charlotte Pier for the Museum and Science Center. I had a stack of glasses. And I'm sitting there watching people looking up and wait a second, give me your sunglasses. I mean, to other people, no, no, yeah. no, 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 here, you need to wear these, you know, and right. I was passing them out left and right. And then I got a lot of questions. Oh, this is great. We're, oh, there's, a, there's another one coming. Yeah. yeah that's right. Uh, 
couple of things is that in Nashville, when I was helping coordinate, that is one of the things that we made, and I also helped some folks down in Newberry, South Carolina, is positioning somebody, whether it was the Italian street festival in the middle of Nashville, that has zero to do with science, but the guy wanted it to make sure it was safe. And so again, somebody reached out, it was like two, two astrophysicists from California. They were coming to Nashville. Anybody need us? Yes, the Italian Street Festival. Uh, but okay. that, but what they were calling that was first contact, second contact, and then take your glasses off. So having having that as a resource and making that part of your overall plan. And then this was something that a gal, Theo Wellington, so I give this all to Theo in Nashville. We, these things are great. You can hold punch here. You can put it around the kid's neck. And it's like they're less likely to get their fingers over this. Because if you've ever seen a kid try to put on one of those paper things, mm -hmm. their hands are completely all over yep. the mylar. So I these I even think I like these maybe even more for uh, adults even. But hole punching those and creating that so that if there's a kid and, you know, or like an educational event, they got it around their neck. They're not like, where to put it? Yeah. And it's, it's right there. So those are my things. But have positioning, that was one of my most fun things was to position like science folks at the zoo, at the Italian street festival, at the ball game, at the sound stadium, making sure that somebody there was calling it correctly just for the, yep. for, for the confusion. One thing that I, I don't know if that's really always clear to the public is that the eclipse classes can be used on things that there are no eclipses. Yeah. And you know, as we talk about really like this this year and how the sun is part of your everyday life and sun touches everything. And so when you give those glasses out, like and our school people are trying to send you glasses out, you can use them tomorrow and the next day, the next day, and the next day. Like this is how you can always take care of our take care of our sun. And that's one way to get people to know that they can keep them. For the next episode, and but right. also be careful when you send out because not when when you're not even messaging that people need to keep it. I've handed out glasses to kids, and then immediately they fold the lens, and then I take them back and I say, "Don't do that." <laughs> so you have to send them out immediately as well, not to send them. But going back to your point too, um, for certain audiences, maybe all what would be preferable if you're just starting out like ordering viewers from scratch would be viewers, like maybe with thicker cardboard, not quite as immediately bendy, or like the glasses. After glasses and these things, I would go with this completely 100%, just because even for adults, it's like, this is cool. You can slide it back down into something safe. When we were going and reaching out to other vulnerable communities in Nashville, we had a church hand things out to the homeless in the kind of like the bridge community. And so we came up with different ways to get, connect with audiences as you wouldn't consider like including. And so that was like a really other beautiful thing is that I think somebody else mentioned this morning, we've got like hands on Nashville or Dream Center. We were going into housing communities and making sure, and a lot of times those are immigrants and they're non-native English, you know, they're not like English speaking. So that's where that graphic of um, AA that I got it off the AAS site uh, for that. So making sure that that everybody, and, and again, getting anybody who would talk to you. It's like, from my experience, I got brought in about nine months prior to it, the event in Nashville. And it was like, even at nine months, it felt like banging my head against the wall, like because the mayor at the time, yeah. God bless her, but she was not listening. She was tone deaf, did not think it was going to be that important, was a roadblock at every turn. And then when the when all of the parks um, and campsites in Nashville and Middle Tennessee started getting booked up, people started paying attention. And so so I my biggest thing that I've been telling everybody is just you got to be loud and long and loud and get those partners and friends that'll be loud with you. Another um, another suggestion for the viewers is actually the tents that were made um, by Franklin Institute, where folks can just stand under it um, and look up. Because I think, especially for young children, folks who might have any sensory issues with putting glasses or something to their face, yes, you can then very easily and like kindergarten or like you know two year olds, you don't really how are you going to put this on two year olds? Well, you can do this to a two year old, you know, put the kid under a tent and look up and like that's that's something that's. 
Yeah, the roll. You get a roll. Yeah, and they get actual tension. Vader. You got it earlier because a lot of your supplies are going to the winter of the day for us. You can't want to wait. I wanted to uh, add on to the be loud and be vocal. Um, uh, one of the ways NSF is hoping to get out into the communities is to go through state F4 offices. Mm -hmm. um, so if you folks are in, in communities or in states that have um, F-score, which I'm happy to talk about, please reach out to the NASA and NSF F-score offices. Um, I just let them know you're interested in, and I'm hoping that we'll get pressure from them and we'll, you know, it'll, it'll go both ways. It's an easy way for NSF to try to distribute materials because we don't, we don't have the, um, the networks that NASA does. So we'll reach out to the yeah. education institutions. You were, we were hearing notes, for example, out of Buffalo. I thought they said that some of the, some of the bread and breakfasts and hotels on that site are already booked, oh, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's a piece of information. I, I've been talking to people in the parenting community, everything from the barbershop to the parenting historical, the docents and buildings. As I go to talk to people and giving them the Museum and Science Center card, oh, really? That's great. What's this about? Right? He um, said, you should check this out. I don't think that there's a regional or government or local city site that starts documenting this stuff. They say, you know, you really can't get booking. Booking, you're kidding yeah. now? Yeah. You know, it, it, because when they go to check on it two weeks before the event, oh my goodness, everything's booked, everything's taken up. So some some of the information which is we know now could actually start getting documented and say, oh my goodness, what's all these bookings for? Why why is this happening? And that would get people to kind of think the other way around. But in Nashville, I will say that Visit Music City, our kind of tourism venue there, they were they did have a humongous list, Great. and they started. They were actually early adopters even before kind of the mayor and the city were. But right. they were on it as far as accommodations. And then Loretta was talking about down in Kerrville, where there are not a lot of um, hotels talking to people about maybe, or to Airbnb about having like a short-term thing for Eclipse Night, because I mean, Kerrville and kind of West Texas is gonna be a great spot to go, but you don't have tons of accommodations there. So we're thinking, is there, if we can have our, you know, young people helping residents get some, their backyards and their extra rooms on Airbnb, you could, you know, quadruple our capacity in these rural areas. We can get some more local oh, kind of yeah. 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 So, like you can park on my driveway. Yeah. yeah. In, yeah. In, in the oh, it's not in the background. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. My old farmers are pretty, pretty nice. nice. That's a question too. Okay, so they would have to. 2017, we've been trying to get people to open up reservations farther than a year out, mostly as smaller ones. Most of the corporations to hotels, their systems will not, they, they want to take reservations. It's not because they don't want to. Their systems will not accommodate until they get ahead. And what happens is nobody can get anything. And then day one, they their system crashes. Yeah, they sell out like ninety percent, and even if you've written down something, the people in the hotel can't enter it because everyone's trying to get it on that one day, and it's just like traveling out of an eclipse. If there's a way we can national chain of commerce, just a national organization say, hey, just to be aware, because I don't even I would never try to book on April 9th, 2023 anywhere because. That is under a year, and I'm trying to get people to book now. And I think these are great ways that we can partner. Is that you know, the federal government can't tell anyone how to run their business, right? Like that's that's not who we are. Um, but if you say, hey, there's this need, and I can get you in contact with the National Chamber of Commerce, would you give a talk? I can give a talk on the science, and you can say, and this affects us this way. I can, you know, I can tell them a little about the science and what we're expecting for the science. Um, and then, you know, you, and then you can tell them, yes, there's these other planning things. So if it is the National Chamber of Commerce, if it is the, you know, Department of Transportation, the uh, FAA, you know, those types of things, um, if you have a contact and then you can contact one of us and say, hey, we need you to kind of give us the science bit and then we can go and talk about, talk about the other piece. Um, that's another way that we could help. And again, 
I, I, I try to keep it at the national level just simply because I think there's what 3,000 cities on yeah. the path. Right. And right. so as much as I would love to talk to each of you, there's not that many days left. Every couple of weeks. Every couple of weeks, one of the people in the National Academy said, we'll, we'll get text messages on the phone or who's this call? And I had one a month ago from somebody from Tallahassee says, listen, I can't get anything. Could, could I spend the night at your house or can we stay down at your site in Ionia? Can I sleep down there? I'll bring a tent, you know, stuff like this. It's like, oh my goodness. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're trying to do this under the covers to try to get something. The schools could do events, the faith communities could do events, the community centers. I mean, if, if anyone knows of a faith community or school or something in their area where it's going to be totally possible now about opening up or connecting with a faith community to connect with similar denominations outside of the Catholic reality. People can come in, stay at the congregants' homes and make a donation to the church and everybody wins. Elizabeth Arnold should do a fan life. <laughs> okay, I think, sorry, do uh, we have any last questions, comments? Um, Kelly, I think there's one more for you, um, but I can't quite, I can't read that for you, sorry. Okay. Uh, I think that's the same one. Is it? The one about American paperware is, uh, if you go to the Am Amazon, you'll find several with the money. Oh, okay, okay, but this one. Okay, good, great. Okay. okay, well, I think we should thank our panel. Well, 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 And Kim, I found some of these. This is from a German physicist. Yeah. There's all these sites listed in the world nature. Oh, okay. This, he's pretty good. Yeah. He does all kinds of research articles. Oh, it's a brain. Okay. Hi. This is all over. I was just trying to scroll through. Yeah. She talks about the heart and science. You can't just see where I'm at. They have sensors that send it down to a certain freaking theater. Right. Yeah. I think that. yeah, I'm more of the, the operational mindset. So I can sit in here and we're all running around. We're just doing our lunch thing. I mean, I feel like we're doing it for the folks. Otherwise, I will literally cancel it. I think everyone does right now. No, my high yeah. school bullies became the mayor of my hometown. I remember when we were in but we became sort of always friendly. But he very much wants me to be his friend now. You know, I was in so the. He actually was a super big about getting to go back to class after the Clips event, and I had just sent some of his classes to his school. So, hilariously, I needed all the work I wanted to do in my hometown. And I got to night now for giving him free all of his creative bullying, which was actually kind of woke. I mean, I'm doing it. It's like, I think it's 